people, you know, what, what constructive conversations can look like, you know, and actually to me, this would be my dream is to have more spaces like this. where We're not always just talking about one side of the side. Okay. So just take a look around, just take a look around on the screen. If you can try and see the, uh, the bachelorette party of Karen Wolf, like back there, people saying, just take a look at everyone on the screen and just recognize that we're all here for a common cause. We may come from different backgrounds and have different perspectives and have different views, but we're all here for a common cause, which I think is really just beautiful. All right. So I want to take this a little bit deeper. I want to take this a little bit deeper. I want to do a, a visualization. All right. Uh, Karen and, and Karen and gang. All right. Try to be focused here. All right. Try to like, get down now to like a very lower energy. <laughs> and we're going to do a bit of a visualization together uh, and just kind of get more connected. All right. So if I can ask you to close your eyes and just get comfortable. Kind of wiggle your, your body. If you're sitting down, just wiggle your bum in your seat and get plants and get comfortable there. Sit your back straight. Take a nice, big, deep breath in. And now, so I'm actually, do me, yeah, do me a favor. Keep yourself unmuted. Now. I'm going to ask you to, now, to help me out to keep the, the pace, the, the breathing here. Keep that pace for me. Just go and close your eyes and get comfortable. Know you're safe here. And we're gonna just do a bit of a, a body scan right now. We're gonna get here right now. Just allow yourself to be completely present on this call. Mm. Allow yourself to be fully participant, a full, a full participant here. And as you're breathing, taking these nice big, nice, big, deep, long breaths in the nose and out the mouth. Focus on any areas of your body where you may find any particular tension or tightness, especially for a conversation like this, you might find it in your jaw, perhaps in your, your throat, could be in your chest. And every time you breathe in deeply, just focus that energy, that fresh oxygen into that tightness if you have it. You can also start, do a bit of a scan and start from the top of your head and work your way down. Breathing into your eyes. Release any kind of tension. Keep on going down to your nose, back to your jaw again, your face, your forehead. And keep deepening the allowing yourself to be here and be present. And as you're breathing, just keep on going down your body to your neck to your back, to your shoulders. And allow yourself to just open up. Allow yourself to be safe. Allow yourself to be relaxed, be present. And go further down still to your chest, your heart area. This is what can get blocked and tightened up a lot when we're passionate about something. We can hold ourselves, hold a lot of energy there. Keep on breathing deep and keep on going all the way down. And as you're taking these deep, long breaths, again, just get here. Kind of forget your day. For me personally, I have my family here for the weekend. They just left a couple hours ago, so I'm getting myself present with you guys. Some of you are doing bachelor parties, bachelorette parties. So you have plans throughout the day. And just allow yourself to keep on dropping in here further as you go. Beautiful. Keep that rhythm and keep your eyes closed. We're going to go on a journey. All right. Now, what I'm going to invite you to do, I'm going to ask you, is to allow yourself to shed some layers. We're going to shed some layers together. We're going to get down to the, the, the bare essence of who we are. All right. So keep your eyes closed and just allow yourself to journey. As I ask you these uh these layers and you see them dissolve away from you you see them fade off of you and become more of who you are less of a title if you feel any kind of tightness because you may instinctively want to hold on to that label breathe into that and just let it dissolve away so a big deep breath in together Take one step back outside of yourself and see yourself about three feet away. 
You can maybe standing behind you, in front of you. Maybe you find yourself hovering above you. And release the layer that is your professional title. So wherever you work, whatever you do, let that dissolve. Breathe into that and let that dissolve away. Any restrictions, any kind of obligations you feel tied to that title, let that dissolve away. Move a little bit further away from yourself. Your title in your family, if you're a mother, father, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, cousin, let that dissolve away. Any expectations that may come with being in your family, just breathe into that. Any expectation for your culture, traditions, your city, state, country, let that dissolve away. And observe yourself. Just take a look at yourself. Change your perspective. Has your clothes changed? Has your posture changed? Do you see yourself any differently? Deep breath in. And get a little bit further away from yourself. Still close enough where you can make out the detail, but a little bit further away. I want to shed any kind of uh, cultural expectations that you may have. May come from the country you're in, the state you're in, maybe a, a political perspective. Let that melt away. Just let that dissolve away. Feel yourself becoming more and more down to your essence of who you are. Now, just put yourself high enough, further enough away where you can actually see your, 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 your country. You can see scope. You can see the lines that separate your state, your country, and watch those dissolve. They no longer exist. All you now see is landmass. You see yourself, but around you, you see all the landmass around you. There's no borders. There's no labels on the countries. There's no labels on the cities. It's just you and more freedom, more space. Another big deep breath in. Get yourself a little further away, a little higher. And actually now feel the space between you and everyone else. Not just the people on the screen, but the people globally. The energy that connects us. No one now on this globe, this map that you're looking at, no one has any label. They're not carrying any prejudice. They're not carrying any bias. They're not carrying any kind of religious views, political views, cultural views. We're all just here doing the best we can, wanting to figure it out, wanting to be loved, wanting to be seen, I really want to be connected. Another big deep breath in. Now we're going to take five more deep breaths and you're going to just slowly get closer down to your body, all right? Get closer down to yourself. Still carry the lightness of not having labels, of not having expectations of not having pressure, of not feeling like you need to be a certain thing or person. Get closer still. You're seeing yourself. Observe yourself from the outside. What does your face look like? What clothes are you wearing? Last two. And bring this sense of peace with you to this space. Becoming more present more alive, more light. This last deep breath, we're going to take it in. And on the exhale, just open up. Just open up your eyes and have a look in the screen and just connect again with everyone who's here. Let this energy carry on throughout the call. We're not here to prove anything to anybody. We're not here to change anyone's mind. We're just here to be human, that's all. Just seven, well, actually, I'm not sure how many people with Karen. We're just going to say seven to 10 people just being human, all right? 
Cool, beautiful. So this is my ask. My ask of everyone here, you know, either no need to unmute yourself, just raise your hand. But my ask of you is, can we carry this same energy without having our labels on ourselves through this call to connect? Can we do that? Can we allow ourselves to be able to open up our mind to what's not possible, but just what's possible or what's true for someone else? All right. Can we do that? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. So. Just want to go into now that the most of you are, are here and we're going to let some more people just kind of trickle in. I just want to let you guys know who I am. Most of you, I, I, I know me. Some of you don't. Some of you are in the same circles and we're in the same space, but we don't really know who I am or what the hell I'm doing here. So I'm Brian Jenkins. I, I currently live in Grand Canary, Spain, off the coast of Morocco. I'm originally from Florida. I've been outside of the United States for almost 12 years now, um, and I am a personal leadership coach focusing more on personal truth and authenticity. So my main motivation for being here is one, to mm, allow people to share their different truth, allowing people to be here to be completely authentic. And it's also important to me on a per professional aspect, per standpoint, but also from a personal one of being a bigger mission of wanting to connect people. I wanna live in a more compassionate world. I wanna live in a more loving world. I want to live in a space where we actually see people as humans and not as objects in, in our world. And so that's my main motivation. Um, with that, I want to pass over to Nasser and just share his, uh, you know, who are you and why are you here, bro? Thank you, Brian. Uh, yeah, my name is Nasser June Bear. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in California and a spiritual activism coach. And I'm passionate about helping people bridge the gap between personal growth and healing work and positive social change. And so the reason I jumped at the chance to participate on this call when Brian invited me is because I believe that no matter what size problem we're facing, the way that we face it matters. And my, my top three values are love, humor, and justice. And when I look out at the world and how the world is handling this public health crisis, I see fear. I see people taking themselves way too seriously. And I see important questions of impact and responsibility being largely ignored. And so the reason I'm here today is to see if I can bring a little bit of a different perspective. And one part of that perspective is that we can't solve a problem if we can't talk about it. And we can't talk about it if we can't listen to each other. And so I'm really grateful to Brian for setting this up. Thank you. Definitely. Cool, cool, great. So now I want to just take, go and take, take a little bit deeper about who we are uh, and our perspectives on this, okay? So my standpoint on this is I am uh, not vaccinated and I personally have no intention to be vaccinated, okay? And I'm only saying that because Nasser has a different perspective. Nasser, you want to share you know, your perspective on this or your stance? Uh, yeah, and I don't even know if I would call it a stance or perspective. It's just m what I chose was to get vaccinated. Uh, I've been vaccinated since February, March. I was able to get it pretty early because I am a, a healthcare worker. Beautiful. And the only reason I'm, I'm making that point to say that is because I want I wanted to make sure there's balance here. One, I was already attracted to Nasser from his experience. I've been in spaces with him before where he, he has done a, a fantastic job navigating the conversation around race. Um, but I was de if definitely much more drawn to it because we have different, you know, we, we choose different things right now. And this is the whole point of actually being having a balanced conversation on this. So that's really neither here nor there, but I just want to let you guys know, because some people are a bit nervous that this is going to be one side or another. It's not about that. It's about bringing people together. All right. So the intention. So you know who we are. You know why this is important to us. So what do we what would we like to get out of this? This meeting, this global meeting, uh, Alexandra, welcome, brother. If I'm not mistaken, you are actually also in California, North California. Palm Springs. Palm Springs. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Excellent. So the intention of this, the intention is, again, like I said before, going back to getting human, going back to putting some compassion in the conversations, having these debates where we can actually, you know, really more uh, uh, to understand, um, to better understand the universal truth. If we're like Nasser said, if we're able to have this conversation share without actually trying to take someone out, without trying to make someone right or wrong and actually just connect, we can better form our truth on this on, on, for us personally. And then that's going to definitely spill over to how we present ourselves in the world. OK, so also having said that, you are, have no moral obligation to change your mind. You know, I do invite you to listen. 
I definitely do invite you to, uh, to open up what's, uh, what can be true for you, but there's no obligation for you to change your mind. And no one's going to ask you to do that here today, okay? Um, you're in a safe space. You're safe here. We're all friends. We just went on a journey together. We just saw the world from a different perspective. There's no borders here, all right? Um, that's the, the main intention I want you guys to understand. Nas, any other perspectives or anything you want to add to the, the intention from your side? Um, well, yeah, I, I, I just want to be a voice for, and I know you spoke to this as well, a, a voice for compassion. Yeah. Um, that the way to stop, the way that, that we can listen to each other and, and stop making each other wrong is by adopting a mindset of compassion, which um, I, the way I understand that comes from the Dalai Lama, who, who says that all human behaviors are motivated by either the desire to uh, be happy or avoid suffering. And when you look at your own behaviors that way, <clears throat> and you look at other people's behaviors that way, you start to realize that it, you can't really judge people anymore because we're all just doing the best we can with what we know. And that's, that's really what I want to bring. Yeah, beautiful. And so before I move on from there, actually, I'd love to um, hear from each one of you guys, um, maybe why you're here, what intention you would like to see from this space. So I'm going to actually go from the top of my screen, which Anna, you're the first person. Um, so if you can just share what you'd like to see from this, uh, this, this, this global town hall that we're here right now, and then you call the next person who you'd like to hear from, and we'll continue that way. All right. You have to unmute yourself. There you go. Okay. Um, so hi everyone. My name is Anna and I'm a teacher here in Spain. And uh, I uh, firstly, I'd like to thank you the opportunity to express myself without being ju judged because I've been experiencing, um, I've been criticized a lot because of my decision about the vaccination. And, um, and, and secondly, I, li I like to say that uh, as a teacher, we, we are supposed to teach our students to think by themselves to, um, in a critical way that's, that's called critical thinking. And no, uh, most of the teachers, they don't do that. And um, Okay, I respect every uh, everyone's methodology, but uh, as a teacher, I think it's so important to to teach our students to 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 uh, to decide what they want. And um, most of most of the teenagers nowadays are being. Anna, Anna, just real quick, real quick, just be real specific. What would you like to see from this call, and then pass it to someone uh, else? Okay, so. Um, just, just to, um, just to not being judged by other people if you're vaccinated or not, and 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 don't, um, and I don't like to be judged uh, as an irresponsible person. That's all. <laughs> Who would you like to hear from next? Um, uh, maybe. <laughs> Yes, it's real concise. What, what's your intention? What would you like to get from this call? Um, hi. Um, I think um, I stand with Anna in that I think that there have been dangerously simplified generalizations made uh, one way or another, but mostly against people who have chosen not to be vaccinated. And it's kind of a lonely place to be um, because you're either categorized as one thing or another without being actually heard. Everyone has their own story. They have their own truth. They have their own reasons. Um, so I think I would like to see a space with no judgment where everyone has come to speak their own truth with an open mind and as, sorry, I can't read at this time. Now, sir, has said with compassion. Oh, cool. Beautiful. Thank you. And who would you like to hear from next? Whose intention? Um, 
Next one down. I can't read, I'm sorry. <laughs> late here and the light is, and I need glasses. Devon. Hey guys, it is great to drop in with you guys. And um, I am seconding the intention of, of compassion and just opening up a space where we can actually talk about this. It's been an interesting, highly opinionated subject. And I've been very close to both sides. Um, my sister's a doctor and like was in Brooklyn in the heat of it where there were tractor trailers as like refrigerated tractor trailers for extra morgue. And then at the same time, I was hearing people going like, this is all a hoax. So um, yeah, there's this, there's this Ray Dalio quote that I, that really resonates. That's just think for yourself while being radically open-minded. Mm. And I'm excited to hear everyone's truth. And I'm, ex yeah, I'm excited to hear where everyone's at. So thank you for holding the space. Yeah, beautiful brother. Thanks for being here. Pass over to somebody. All right, Alexander. Hey everybody, Alexander Hill here, coming at you from Palm Springs. I, uh, I'm taking my baby for a walk and he just fell asleep. So it feels very aligned to be here on this call. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, just grateful for Bri uh, Brian putting all this together and bringing people together to have conscious discussions about things that are very pertinent in the world. What I would like to see from this call, um, I want to learn something. I, I feel like I have... In a lot of ways, I have my mind made up about uh, what's what's going on and where I stand. But um, like Devin just said, I'm radically open minded and I would love to learn something new from this call or to to open my heart to another level of compassion uh, and deepen my understanding. Beautiful. And I, I, you actually said something I actually want to just know for um who, who else has their mind feel like it's really made up? Just raise your hand. Like my hand is actually up. Like who has their mind made up, but they're still willing to open up to something? Yeah. Well, my, my, my question on that is like, what is your mind made up about? I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many things to make a decision on. You know, is it about whether the virus is real, whether to get vaccinated, whether to have an opinion about people who like, what is your mind made up about? There's so yeah. many things. Yeah. We'll dive into that a little bit more. Because actually, I mean, that's a very, very good point. I think exactly, you know, just saying that in Austria is like, I think where a lot of this is getting very jumbled together because we're having conversations and people are putting up memes and clips and videos and we really don't know what it is. We're not talking about the same thing. So, but I think in general, for me, when I say my mind is made up, like there's a variety of different stances that it's just there. So just curious, uh, just more of a curiosity question. Uh, Tommy, that just leaves you left to share what you'd like to get from this call. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Hey, everybody. I'm Tommy Jesse. I am currently in Playa del Carmen, Quinta, Quintana Roo, Mexico, on business and a little pleasure. So, um, so let me just take a few minutes to uh, participate in the Zoom. What I'm looking for in this call is I just want to see the difference of, you know, uh, differences of opinion. I'm open and welcome to that. I'm open and welcome to that. Uh, I guess I just want to learn more. I want to just hear about what every, what everybody else may think mm -hmm. in regarding uh, to the situation here. Mm -hmm. um, a man of peace. Uh, I really don't like the judgment thing. Um, I think everybody should be heard uh, with respect. And I like to keep an open mind. That's basically it. Cool. Great, great. Karen, if you can hear us, we're just actually just dropping in real quick and sharing our intentions for the calls, what we like to get from the call. Um, so if you're in a position, just unmute yourself and share that. Great. If not, we'll, we can skip you. Yeah. Um, there are four of us in here. So Hello. for me, my intention is really just to listen as, as, as much as we can while we're doing our, our, our things and just um, to hear different perspectives and like be with the difficulty with the anxiety. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, of the, you know, 
fears and passion and discomfort and judgment that I feel and like, you know, with differing views and, um, you know, just be a part of an intentional conversation that um, is so necessary and like completely rare. <laughs> so um, let's see, Joanne, do you want to share? Yeah, pass yeah. the phone around. Let's, let's, let's do a four for one. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my intention is to really be in a space. I'm really glad that you initiated this space where we could just talk about talking about it versus yeah. having a side and, and we can all hear each other's perspective and create more understanding because I, I'm really been having real trouble with the othering of, mm. of the, the process. And, and my thing is like, well, everyone can have their viewpoint and um, but if not everyone gets heard, then that's a problem too. So, so that's part of my intention here is to hear everyone and be in a space where we have the opportunity to be heard and understood. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Who else is in the and then Amy, I'm sure I'm sure you want to share. So Amy's driving, but she'll share. Yeah. So I I was one of those obnoxious people that really had a strong view about this subject. And um and I've been reading doing my own reading recently and realizing how wrong I've been. So I do want to find ways of talking about this without going on my righteous horse. Um <laughs> So yeah, that's my, that's my thing. And thank you guys for your flexibility with our lack of containment. No, honestly, <laughs> I am still so impressed. You guys are like on a bachelorette party and still doing this, still participating. <laughs> I'm impressed. Um, and Amy, I just want to recognize you for owning, yeah, owning, owning, what you, to owning like what you feel maybe have not been the most um, effective way to communicate with that. You know, there is no, to me, I don't see really right or wrong, but I think it's just really important that we can recognize that is there something we can do better? And this is actually one of the main, main, main motivations for me actually putting this together because I also was one of those people where I was definitely had my stance and I was focused on trying to convince people on how I feel. And I totally forgot to try to connect. I totally forgot that another person has a different reality than mine, you know? And so um, just thank you for owning that and being available to open it up. I appreciate that. Yeah. Hey. Cool. All right. So. Before we just jump right in, I just want to ask another, ask you another invitation again to speak openly, speak honestly, and concisely. Uh, the beautiful thing about this group not being so, so large is we'll probably have an opportunity to allow everyone to share their bit on the different kind of questions we'll go through. Um, but just speak openly, honestly. We don't need to go through everyone saying, it's just my opinion. And I feel that we all know that we're all safe. We like, we've all be like, we've established a safe container. Just get right to your point say what you need to say, and just speak honestly. And at the same time, recognize that if you hear someone say something, their opinion, and it feels a bit kind of personal, you feel the tightness coming in the chest again, I invite you to take that woo, deep cleansing breath, <laughs> loosen all this up, and just allow yourself to just to be open to what's being shared. All right, can we do that? Raise your hands. Can we do that, please? Beautiful. Rock and roll. I don't see Amy's hand. <laughs> Joking. Thank you. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so uh, the first, so what we're going to do, guys, is just go, go and go through a series of kind of questions we have, right? So for right now, I like this to be a bit as neutral as possible, um, just to kind of just, again, allow the connection to happen. And just appreciate that the, the questions that we're going to ask is meant to try to get a focus on something. Um, just as Nasser alluded to before, is when this conversation comes up, it gets so convoluted, we don't really know what we're talking about. And so it makes it a bit complicated to try to have a conversation about a, an aspect. Because if we talk about, like, again, like the vaccine, for example, it's, well, what aspect of that are we not, do we feel a certain way about that, right? If we talk about the, the, the uh, you know, the, the actual um, spit out, Brian, the, um, the lockdowns or whatever it is, I mean, there's so many layers to this. So appreciate that we may not be able to touch on exactly what is passionate for you, but we're going to do our best and give you an opportunity to speak into something that's really passionate to you. All right. Is that cool? Can we agree that we're going to do our very best to, to get a nice mix of everything? Cool. So I'm actually just curious about before we even go into the deep, deep, deep question, just feel, um, what is your biggest desire for humanity? 
your biggest desire for humanity. And I actually just let anyone ready to just unmute themselves and just answer in 30 seconds or less your biggest desire for humanity. Highest, express, highest expression and health for all beings. Beautiful. Cool. Anyone else? Go ahead. Joanne, Joanne um, for me, it's um, freedom of any limiting beliefs or limit, limit anything they feel limited in. Mm. Thank you, Joanne. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Your biggest desire for humanity. Love and understanding. Say again. Peace, love, and understanding. Cool. Thank you, Amy. I think for me, my biggest uh, is 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 care, taking care of each other. Mm. Like that, brother Bear. You want to jump in there? Uh, yeah, I, I want to create a world that effortlessly meets the needs of mothers, children, and dogs. Yeah, I love that. All right, cool. Anybody else want to share before I go into the, uh, the next question? Yeah, Tommy, I think he was going to say something. Cool. Yeah. No, I just wanted to say, I think I want to see more people, I guess, like I said before, become more open-minded and less rigid when it comes to certain ways of thinking. That closes one up seriously. That's what I, you know, that's what I've observed. And I want to see more flexibility in the mindsets of people. That's it. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I'll jump in. I'll say my biggest desire for humanity is that we can learn to, to love each other and see ourselves in the other person would be my biggest desire. Cool. So next question, the opposite, kind of opposite side of that is what would you say is your biggest concern or fear for humanity right now? Your biggest concern or fear of humanity or for humanity? Go ahead, Anna, unmute yourself. And you have to unmute yourself. Mm, okay, now. Um, I'm scared of, of becoming uh, a slaver. You say slaver? A slave, maybe? Slave, yeah, slave, and and you know to have a, a globalist um, dictatorship. Um, yeah, that's my biggest scare now. Cool. Thank you, Anna. That's real. Who else? Go ahead, Joanne. Yeah, mine is the de the deterioration of sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. My fear is that our, our fear is running us <clears throat> and causing us to distrust each other and distrust ourselves and can take us to a point beyond which healing is not feasible. Mm. Cool. We have a new person in the car. <laughs> um, I, my fear is our, around our disconnection from ecosystems yes. and the natural world and seeing ourselves as separate from that and the way that that in, as a result makes us um, impact our environment in negative ways, forgetting our interconnection with the natural world. Yeah, I'm sorry, what, what's your name? Melissa. Melissa, cool, perfect. Thank you, Melissa. Anybody else, biggest fear, concern for humanity right now? Go ahead, Alex. You know, this was this was a tough one for me to answer right away because uh, you, when you said humanity, I feel like I don't have the right to have a fear on behalf of all humanity. Mm. Uh, so I, I'm just going to say that I uh, I have a fear. I have my own fears and I have my own shadows that I can address. Um, but when it comes to humanity, I have such a deep love and trust and no inner knowing that the human spirit will prevail. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I cannot answer that question in the way that you mm -hmm. phrased it because I don't have a fear uh, for humanity because we're going to make it. Yeah. Love that, bro. Love that. Anybody else? Uh, I'll just say my fear is just that we're all going to kill each other and the planet. Mm -hmm. There they are. We're
Yeah, I, I'll piggyback on that, Karen. And like, if I were to allow myself to, actually, I, I'm very aligned with Alexander's uh, response. But if I look be, like the other side, the darker side to that, that would be my biggest, like, worst case scenario that we become so in this back and forth, we start separating ourselves even more that we just destroy ourselves um, because we don't know how to live with ourselves. That'd be my biggest fear. Yeah, and and just to preface, I've been called crazy my whole life. And sometimes I feel, you know, like John Lennon, he's like, you can say I'm a dreamer. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, I prefer to dream that. <laughs> so. Well, Ale- Alexander, I, I totally identify with that. I, I like to say that I'm half blind, half Persian, half white, and half convinced that we can save the world. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, cool. Now, I just want to just get, get a scope. I just want to put that, that question out there, get scope here. So we, again, just being connected to that bigger vision that, you know, we, again, we're all human here. We're all just trying to do our best. We all want to, you know, feel loved, be loved, see compassion. We want to feel free. Um, and, and so the next question, a little bit layer deeper is just, actually, I'm going to steal this from uh, Nostra's uh, book, is when people talk to you about COVID, the pandemic, the vax, how does that make you feel? or anything related to that topic, all right? When people speak to you about the topic of COVID and everything like that, how does that make you feel? Go ahead, Alex. A lot of times I feel like I'm, I'm being put in a box and I feel like uh, I have to choose a side. That's, mm. that's the, most common, uh, the most common feeling that I get. Mm. Bring up mm-hmm. those words. Yeah. Yep. Anybody else? Devin, Patricia. I usually feel like people are so opinionated and have already made their decisions that it's not worth the conversation. Mm, Okay, yeah. And also a feeling of being unqualified to speak on it, like with here, here's all of the actual data Mm. rather than just the opinions that I'm bringing. Right. So thank you, Devin. Um, I feel a little bit of both. I feel, I think, along with everybody else, a little bit of anxiety, no matter what perspective you have, because there's always going to be someone that disagrees and that causes tension. And um, at the same time, um, I I feel disappointment. I feel disappointment a little bit. Mm. Not because of different perspectives, but because of uh, intolerance, I think. And I've been surprised. I I think most of you will feel the same. I've been surprised by people who I didn't expect to surprise me. No, and again, not because of a different perspective, but because of their intolerance, mm. lack of solidarity. And it's, it's opened my eyes and it's, it's, it's been a little bit disappointing, I think. And mm. to answer your question before, I, I had to think about it. My biggest fear for humanity is I think that humanity loses its humanity. Mm-hmm. That's where things could get <sighs> Thank you for that. I'm a very positive person, by the way. I just, mm. you asked about a fear, that's why. <laughs> I, can, I can vouch for that. <laughs> um, Joanna. I'm sorry, is it Joanne or Joanna? Either way. I like okay. Joanna better lately than identifying okay. better with that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, it, it, when someone asks me about COVID or, you know, I... I think it also depends the approach and and who who it's coming from. But I, there, I, what I can say, there's always like this kind of like a little bit of a, do I need, do I need to protect myself mm-hmm. from this person? Do I need to put mm-hmm. my guard up? Do I need to stand firm on what I believe? Like I have to hold myself accountable to myself and, and, and I may have to take a different stance with mm-hmm. different people. Versus being a relaxed conversation about it. That's yeah. not that's not what feels the norm right now, right, unfortunately. Right, 
just a show of hands, it, it, does anyone else feel that way? Like you have to kind of put your guard up when the question comes or someone approaches you. I, my, I definitely feel that way as well. And I definitely share what Devin said as well. Like sometimes I feel like I maybe it's probably me projecting or judging that person. I may have heard or seen something from them. And so if they ask me specifically, I just like, it's not even worth it. So I just kind of just kind of tap out before I even get into the conversation. All right, cool. Anyone else? Um, yeah. Um, there's a, a powerlessness that I feel sometimes just at the sheer size of the problem. And also at, at, I, I think I perceive that almost every other problem that humanity is facing is wrapped up in this issue. And that, and, and so because of that, it feels very high stakes. And so like, there's this urgency. It's like, this conversation needs to go well. You know, we, this needs to be a learning opportunity. We need to grow together. And, and so all that like urgency is like a, an anxiety that comes up in me. And, and then just a sadness at realizing like, I can't, solve the world's problems in one mm. conversation mm. <laughs> so all of that comes up yeah, yeah yeah i definitely share that sense of helplessness helplessness as well for sure cool all right so before i go to the next question anyone else want to chime in on that add to that uh does melissa not want to speak amy <laughs> they can't hide i can't see them but i know they're there <laughs> We're looking for parking, but I will share, I, um, I mean, just very simply, like I feel anxious and angry. Usually I feel afraid. I feel angry. I feel self-righteous. I, um, feel distant, you know, that guard that Joanne spoke about, I think is, you know, very much a part of the experience for me. Cool, guys. So the next question is actually going to be a, bit, a little bit different. All right. So just listen to how we're going to unpack this. All right. So it's, it's going to be two parts. Um, we're going to get a chance to answer this in two different ways. So I want to ask, like, you're going to give your you're going to give your perspective and then you're going to give the perspective of the other or someone who has a, a opposing view of yours. OK, and you're not going to tell us which one is yours and which one is the other. Does that make sense so far? So I'm asking the question. And then do you choose where well, I'm not going to say you're going to choose your perspective or another perspective, you know, or something or you think the other person may be going through. I just want you just to share it without saying this is mine or this is other. Does that make sense? Each person is going to answer the same question. Correct. Two times. Two times. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to do one round and then you decide if it's going to be your perspective or if you want to share what you believe the other, other perspective is. And then we're going to do another round and then do the opposite. Cool. So the question is, um, what do you believe that someone doesn't understand about the situation? All right. So the question is, what do you believe that they don't understand about the situation? So use it as, you know, connect with what you feel when you're having these conversations what someone may not understand about your perspective, and then allow yourself to go into the other person's perspective and answer that question. Does that make sense? So I, I, can, I can try to demonstrate it since everyone already knows my please, perspective. Please, please. <laughs> uh, all right. So I think that what the other person doesn't understand. So that part you're going to leave out. Oh, okay. Well, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, yeah, yeah, you're correct. Sorry about that. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I, I'm not saying which side I'm talking from yet, but just whoever the other is, uh, I think that they don't realize how hard it's going to be to minimize death and get things back to normal assuming that's what we want, like I, I getting things back to normal to me seems kind of impossible, but, but without, without vaccination, it's going to be much harder. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I don't think they realize. Uh, and now am I supposed to say the other side right away well, or, or on a second round? Yeah. Second round. We'll do second okay. round. Cool. Right, so someone else jump in. Maybe someone, and some, one of the, some of the ladies who may have to get off the call soon, anyone want to chime in and, and share, what do you think the other side doesn't know? 
We have Karen, Amy, Melissa, and Joanna. That, okay, so what, I mean, I think just like what Nasser said, but. Um, yeah, what Nasser said, and and um, what I try to tell people is you're, you're not, because now people are saying, well, you can still get COVID. And, and even when you're vaccinated. So what I think people don't understand is that, and a lot of them, a lot of people don't, is that the vaccine, vaccine protects against mm. death, basically. You're mm. not going to die you from uh, just getting a vaccine, um, whereas you can die from COVID. So that's sort of what I, but what also what Nasser said, that we're not going to get the hell out of this situation if people are not vaccinated. But there's also, I mean, the thing that the, the landscape has changed because we're now realizing that the that the vaccine actually doesn't protect against uh, spread. And, and just, protect just, hold, just hold, just hold there for against, a moment before you go into yeah. the, the context and the dialogue. Uh, just stop it right there. Like they're, what you think they don't understand. Is there anyone else in the car with you who wants to share before you guys have to jump off? Because it looks like you guys are about to make, make a move. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, we're about to. Yeah. What I what I feel like they don't understand is that nobody knows the truth of mm. anything. It's unpredictable on either end. So let's work together to do our best. And I, I'll share, I have a thing to share. I, what I think they don't understand or the other side doesn't understand is that the more hosts that um, this virus has to work oh, yeah. inside, the more um, likely it is to mutate to be more and more deadly. Yeah. And so that thank you. Getting the vaccine helps uh, prevent it from becoming more deadly to others as well, not just to ourselves. All right, so Karen, are you guys giving it to uh, to jump off? We have a few minutes, but oh. I'll, I'll I'll send a little chat when we do need to hop off, or we might just listen in with our camera off. Okay, cool. But before you jump off, we're gonna be human. We're gonna celebrate you before you get off. So make sure you give us like a, a thirty seconds to like sh celebrate and cheer for you. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right, cool. Anyone else? I saw so jump in. What you guys are thinking about this? What I don't think the other side understands is that that it can still be, the virus can still be transmitted even if you have the, the vaccine, the double, um, the double vax, vaccination. So I think people don't understand it can still um, be a host and spread it. Anna, Tommy, Patricia, Devin, it's your chance again, you're in a safe spot, let it rip. <laughs> no judgment. Anna, go ahead. Well, um... I think they don't understand that what what the vaccine contains and and uh, to have something in your body that you don't know what's in it, I think it's it is scary. Mm. Okay. Cool. Who else? What does the other side not understand, whether from your perspective or the perspective or the other? Go ahead, Alex. Um The other side doesn't understand death. Um, and the other side. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. I think that's all I got. <laughs> I, I think there's one, one side. I, I don't know which side it is, but um, the, there's, a, there, there's, there's people that don't understand science. There's people that don't understand spirituality and there's people that don't understand death. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's all I got. Very good. Tommy, Jesse. You know what I've been uh, reading about lately? A lot of people say they don't know what's inside of that you know, vaccination, but then I hear the other side say, but then again, there are people that are, that are taking flu shots. They've had these various types of shots yet do you know what, uh, what you know, what's contained in you know side of those shots there? So uh, you know that's my thing. There. Beautiful. We'll just bring that up. Patricia or Devin, you want to chime in? I'd like to hear from you. 
Um, any perspective? Right. I think what the other side doesn't understand is that hospital beds that could be taken up um, by people who desperately need care are taken up by unvaccinated people. Mm. Thank you. There's more, but... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Thank you for being concise. <laughs> Devin, what you got? I think the other side doesn't understand that we have a shared common enemy for the first time and mm. almost like history it's not it's not political it's it's a biological shared enemy that we can come together on yeah, yeah i like that one okay cool so everyone just with me deep breath in hey, just let that drop down a little bit anyone feeling just sharing that and hearing people's um you know, perspective, whether it's theirs or someone else, anyone feel a little bit tightness already feel a little bit anxiety coming in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I, I started to get a little bit hot over here. It's, already, it's hot in Spain. I started to feel the, the temperature rise a little bit. <laughs> it was funny. Okay. I, I, I noticed in, when Anna said what, what she said about people not knowing what's inside the, the vaccine, there was a part of me that wanted to jump and say the thing that Tommy eventually said that like, Oh, there's other things that we put in our bodies that we don't know what's inside of them. Yeah, and yeah. they haven't been vetted by the FDA necessarily, you know? Yeah. Um, so, but I noticed that there was like this part of me that wanted to jump in and do it. And I'm like, okay, when you're wanting to jump, it's cause you're not listening. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. No, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that reflection. Thank you for that. You know, and this is, you know, again, I want to go back to the start of this call and, and go back and to recognize you guys for being here in the practice as well, because talking about having deeper conversations and connecting with people, we have to be in the practice of doing that. You know, we can't always expect the other person to, 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 to click, to change. And I know I've been guilty of that, you know, and I know I see a lot of people say, I hear a lot of people like from all sides, oh, there's just no point talking to that person because they just don't get it. They're just going to keep on saying the same thing, you know? And, but we're all saying, we're all pointing the finger. So we're all that person. <laughs> so I just, again, want to recognize you guys for being here in the practice and, and using active listening. So another round here, now we're going to flop it. Okay. Well, all right, Karen, unhook yourself. Everyone unmute yourselves real quick. We're going to send Karen is on her bachelorette party. She's getting married to Nasser in a few weeks. <laughs> and so we're just all going to count of three, just, just, just cheer and just scream for, for the, all these lovely ladies uh, today on a Sunday. Okay. One, two, Three. Woo! Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> you ladies have a, lot, have a great time. Have fun. Be safe. Thank you. We will listen to the rest of the recording later. Definitely. Thank you so much Thank for doing you. this. Oh, you're welcome, ladies. Everybody. Have a great time. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, beautiful. So we're going to do another round and now swap your perspective. So if you gave the perspective of whoever, now flop it, okay? Um <laughs> So I'm going to go on my route. I'm going to say um, what I think the other side doesn't know, the other person doesn't know, is that they are putting my life at risk. Like they don't understand how important these measures are to keep everyone safe. What I think the other side doesn't know is that I care about uh, ending the pandemic and keeping people safe. But I want to find other ways to do that besides getting vaccinated. Mm. Very good. Mm. Um, what I think the other side doesn't know is how difficult it is um, to change someone's mind when their conviction is based on deep intuition. Mm. Mm. Can I add something else? Hold on. Yeah, go ahead. And what I think the other side doesn't know is what it feels like to have a loved one die from a vaccine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Tommy, did you want to jump in? That's the thing. I, I think I might have said from both sides, I guess what I can say is, um, I guess, um, I guess the other side would be, well, we don't know. We shouldn't feel pressured or forced to do something if we're already settled in how you know, we are living. If this is not affecting us and we can go about our daily lives, you know, just playing it safe and just being careful, using precaution, then why do we need to you know, go this route just because everyone else? is feeling that we should, or a majority of people tell us that we should. If we're fine, we should be able to make the decision for ourselves. And if we're comfortable not doing this, then why do it? Mm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Anna, Devin, Alexander. It's so difficult for me to be on the other side. And um, if I have to be honest, I, I, I can't think of any reason to be on that side, I'm sorry. No, I don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> no, no offense taken. No need to be sorry. No. Um, do you, are you open to uh, a follow-up question, Anna? Yeah. yeah. Nasser, do you have a follow-up question for Anna? <sighs> have you heard anything today from anyone on the other side? that was new to you? New to me. Yes. Anything, did you hear anything for the first time from somebody on the other side? Uh, yeah, my ex-husband. What did, what, did, uh, what did he say? Uh, he said that a, a young boy uh, died and uh, he was not vaccinated. And I, I heard that, and I respect that. I respect his opinion, but um, I, I cannot be on that side. It's, there's no way. <laughs> Can you understand how, if, if somebody had a child that died of COVID, can you understand how that would make them feel very strongly that vaccination is important? Yeah, I can assume that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thank you both. Thank you Anna, for being open to those questions. And thank you Nasser for, for leading that. And just thank you guys for being open to that dialogue. You know, this to me is such a beautiful thing just to do. There's no, just opened up. That's it. All right. So uh, Devin or Alexander. Um, the other side doesn't know what it means to, to take full responsibility for their health. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, Devin, and then there's you. The other side doesn't know how many other factors are at play here and and who is controlling these vaccines and these studies and the reports that we get and the data that we are able to make our decisions based on so mm. yeah. that'll be the other side thank you thank you all right how are we all feeling anyone feeling again any kind of tightness or anxiety come up as this conversation comes up as we're talking about different kind of perspectives. Feeling. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> anything, you want, anything you want to share and just get into the space uh, before we move on? Well, <clears throat> I, think, I think my position is, is a little unique. Um, when NASA was asking Anna, could she put herself in the shoes of a mother who's 
uh, child had died from COVID and see how this mother would feel strongly about uh, being vaccinated. I think quite often people don't ask the other question and um, put yourself in the shoes of someone whose family member has died from a vaccine. Um, I think it's just as, as scary, if not more, because especially if you share DNA with, with this person. Hmm. And, uh, you know, when, when things are generalized and people who are unvaccinated become generalized into categories, these categories, and please stop me if I'm going too far, because I'm not sure if that's going to be your next question. These mm -hmm. categories tend to be either anti-vaxxer or uh, denier, like climate denier, COVID denier. And I find that very offensive because to be categorized without being asked, without being asked for your reasons um, is uh, discrediting. It's, um, it's kind of a way to, to shame and blame. And, uh, and it's very discouraging. Mm. Because yes, I'm sure there are hardcore anti-vaxxers, there are hardcore conspiracy theorists, there are hardcore whatever you want to call it. But there are many other reasons um, based on your own proper reasoning and truth. Um, but I'm, I'm upset that no one's talking about that. Mm. Mainstream media is, is, is about uh, shaming um, people who are against the, well, it's not that they are against the vaccine. You see, we have to be careful what words we use. If I don't want to be vaccinated, doesn't mean that I am against vaccines. Mm. And things are so generalized that I, I, I feel very upset and almost intolerant um, the way things are being handled and communicated. Mm. Um, and I think that um, when someone has a conviction, no amount of shaming or bullying is going to, make them change their mind. In fact, it empowers them more because it helps you see that not everyone's done their homework and not everyone has really looked into this and really contemplated on both sides, on both sides. So. I respect those who have the courage and integrity, no matter what side they're on, to be able to express that without judging and listen to others. Because I think the mainstream media is very powerful right now and um, is communicating an untruth. The untruth is that if you do not want to be vaccinated, you are you either fall into this classification or the other, and that's not true. That's not true. Mm. Thank you for sharing that, Patricia. I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing your truth on that. Can anyone, can anyone else relate to what she's saying? Not necessarily the, the specific topic, but just being categorized, not being listened to, being put into a box. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely a real thing for me as well. Go ahead, Tom. You know what I'm finding? Um, a lot of fear is being pumped through social media. In social media, they just, you know, people, they can 
conjure, they can, I don't want to say conjure, but I'll use the word, you know, conjure up certain things in one's mind. Then they pass it over and they, they're feeding it to others. And then all of a sudden you have a group of people that are in one category. And then if you have someone who's thinking for themselves and then wants to you know, look at the whole picture, all of a sudden it's like you're on that, you're on that side and it's just, you don't have any say so for this. This is how we see you right here. Instead of being, instead of actually just being open to what that individual is saying there. And then that, you know, it closes up, you know, that individual, that group of people that have their own opinion about it, um, that possibly have, they possibly have looked over everything and seen everything and can make a judgment. But we as a society at times, we are just very, like I said before, closed minded and we got to get out of that. And it's just, we miss so much. We miss the boats. We can miss the boats so much by doing that. And I'm, I'm finding that to be quite, you know, a, quite a recurring thing. So that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, thanks, Tommy. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And it kind of reminds me, going back to what um, what Devin was mentioning before, actually, all of us in some kind of way mentioned about kind of like losing the opportunity to connect. Like we are just kind of not focused on the big picture here, that there's something happening here. And rather than trying to figure out how we can come together, you know, to to survive this, to 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 overcome this, we are allowing ourselves to be put in, into different boxes. You know, it does feel a bit, feels lonely. It feels like being attacked. It feels like a lot of different things, but it doesn't feel necessarily good. I don't get the warm fuzzies, me personally, you know, here, actually this particular container, like it feels, it feels nice to be actually just here, you know? Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, guys, just real quick for a time check. Like the, my intention was to, to uh, go for an hour and a half. So we have about 15 minutes left. So I want to respect everyone's time. And I'm not mistaken, Nasser, you have something after this. Um, I am more free. Nasser, do you have a hard stop in about 15 minutes? Uh, my hard stop is maybe in half an hour. Half an hour? Okay, cool. Um, so I'm happy to, again, to go on to that, because honestly, I'm really enjoying the conversation, the interaction. Just thank you again, guys, for leaning into the conversation and allowing yourself to express, allowing yourself to be seen and heard. I know it's not the most comfortable thing, but just, yeah, I just want to honor you guys and just show a lot of respect and love for you for doing that. Um, so I'm happy just to stay on again with Nash as well, another half hour. Um, having said that, if anyone needs to jump off, that's okay. Just kind of, you know, quietly fade out. Yeah, um, but yeah. Go ahead, Tommy. Oh, and I was just going to say, I'm going to have to do that in a few minutes. No worries. I'm going to have to jump off. Yeah. No worries. So to kind of go back to an intention, I don't know if we, I, mean, I think we both kind of maybe miss saying this, but there's kind of a, a, how do you say this? A bigger intention that I would love for us to walk away from, myself included. This is again why I have Nasser with me to help keep this, uh, everything balanced, is what is our responsibility in this from an individual standpoint, right? Like, what can we do? What role can we play going forward to one, keep ourselves protected more? I'm talking about more uh, emotionally, more mentally. And of course, physically, there's a physical aspect to this as well. But I think more on an energetic standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint. You know, how can we keep ourselves in a place where we're not closing down on ourselves because there's so much pressure on the outside? And so I want to just kind of save that for the last little bit. And I'm actually going to, I love Nasha to kind of uh, walk us through that a little bit because um, he's just a, a, just a rock star doing that. But before we go into that, I just want to kind of open the space up. If anyone feels like there's something you just want to share, there's no guide on this. Whatever's heavy on your heart right now that you want to just put into the space, the space is open for that. Go ahead, Alex. So we t- we've talked a lot about on this call about categorizing and, and the separation. And I think for most of my life, um, I've been an outlier and I haven't fit into any group or community until I kind of started my own community. Um, but it, it, it's, it, it's almost like the thing that hurts me the most is is people assume things about me, you know, they size me up, which, which humans do. They, we, we judge each other in order to make assessments uh, for our own well-being. And the, the thing that, that gets me really deep the most is I've had a near-death experience. Um, so I've, I've experienced death for several minutes. Um, so... I feel like a lot of other people haven't had that same experience as I have. And it, it, it puts me in a, 
a little bit of a different understanding about the way that I live life and the way that I see life and the, the way that I experience life. Um, so, so really my, my mental health and, and the times where my mental health is challenged the most is when people really don't see me. People really don't want to see me or they, they don't want to hear they don't want to hear the things that have happened to me from big pharma medications. They don't want to hear um, that I've been injected against my will. They, they, they don't really, they can't handle my truth. A lot of people can't straight up cannot handle uh, when I've been arrested when I've been put in mental asylums, uh, when I've been uh, almost killed on several occasions, it, it, peop it gets too much for people. Their blood starts to boil. And they can't handle it. So, so my biggest thing is not being seen, not being heard, and then triggering people to the point where they just can't handle me and they, they can't handle the conversation. And then I'm just like, I'm left with this, like, well, if this person can't handle a conversation, first of all, I'm not a threat to you. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to hurt you. Right. And you should know that because I'm a peaceful, I'm a peaceful human being. Right. And so, so that's, that's the one that, that gets under my skin the most is like when people don't seem to have the capacity um, or, or, or the bandwidth to go there with me. And, and, and that's, that's all I got. Wow, thanks for that's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I just like to just say, does anyone just real quick um, want to uh, reflect something back to Alan, Alexander that you've seen in him today on this call? I'll open that up just uh yeah go ahead and answer yeah um i definitely have seen how you can hold complexities and like i actually don't know how to pigeonhole or categorize you and that that mm -hmm. for me the combination of not knowing how to categorize you and also just the way that i feel your presence like i feel very comfortable with you um and so i just wanted to say that Thank you, brother. Go ahead, Tommy. Oh, well, you know what? I think I've seen, um, it, you know, first off, I appreciate you being so open about uh, some of the things that you have been through because you know, I really couldn't tell. But it seems like you found such peace within those, uh, you know, areas. You, you found a lot of peace um, despite what you have been through. And so I think it seems like you've uh, you know, fought those demons and you've won and you're able to live you know, you know, better. I'm sure you still have your challenges and obstacles, but it seems like you're in a much better place now. And I think that shows a lot of growth. Uh, and I think that's terrific there. So I just wanted to say that. Yeah, I, I think I'm still fighting every day, to be yeah. honest, whether, whether it's, you know, but, but yeah, I'm, I, for me, it's just about staying humble and, and realizing that, you know, the place that I'm most free is like, I don't, I don't know, you know, I, I, I don't know what I don't know. And I just, the place when I'm most free is when I surrender. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good for you. And just, I uh, just want to recognize you again for making this um, a, a priority. You know, you're out there walking uh, your son. You got an opportunity to stop and be engaged in the conversation. I'm not a parent myself, but I can only imagine what that's like. So, you know, just thank you for being here and being part of the conversation, bro. It's the best and it's the worst and it's everything. <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. well, Anna, it's, I felt like before you wanted to say something, uh, but we kind of got, did you want to share something? Me? Yes. Mm. Yeah, I, um, I feel like <clears throat> I've been forced um, by society to get this, this vaccine. And uh, I don't like this, this feeling. And they say it's a voluntary thing, but it's, uh, I don't think it is it's that way. Because um, if, if you don't get it, you, don't, you cannot work, you cannot travel. And so... Um, no matter what you do, um, if you want, if I want to visit my mother in in California, for example, I I cannot go there if I'm not vaccinated. So that that's a mandatory thing then. So if if they if I'm being in, in, imposed to to do something, I I don't like that feeling, and uh, because I cannot. Uh, I cannot convince you that I'm not going to transmit you any virus, <laughs> that I'm, I'm a healthy person, 
and because they say I I may I may be an um, asymptomatic. I don't mm -hmm. know in English. Same thing, asymptomatic. Yeah. Yeah. So they they have they always have the truth. So it's um it's kind of a tough a tough situation. So it makes me feel like. Mm. Uh, I don't know, depressed, maybe depressed and sad. Mm. Mm. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I can definitely under understand how that can feel. And so apart from feeling de like depressed and sad, mm, what would you, how, how would you, how would you like to, to, to feel in this situation? Um, quiet, just quiet. <laughs> Mm. Mm. anybody else have something on their heart or on their mind they just want to put back into the space mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead Devin. hey i just wanted to mm -hmm. offer a little reflection to alexander thank you first of all for uh being here and just sharing so openly Obviously, didn't know you coming into this, but it's been nothing but just love that you've been beaming into this Zoom call. And it gives total context to what you said at the beginning, where you were like, a lot of people don't understand death. And I just want what was on my mind and was on my heart was that we we judge things that are different, that we don't understand. And you clearly have a very different perspective having experienced a near that death, death experience. Most people don't even want to look at death at all. We have like a whole, our healthcare industry is mostly about like death prevention, not really like healthcare in my perspective. So I just think it's a, it's really powerful to hear you sharing the judgment that you get from having this wide open perspective and having experienced all of these things that make people uncomfortable because we don't want to look at that stuff. And I also love that you just have this, this image and vision for humanity kind of seeing it from your, from that bigger perspective. So thank you for sharing. Mm. Anybody else? I don't want to pick on you, but I kind of feel like you, you, you have something else that wants to come out. <laughs> I don't mean to be rude, but what was the question? The question is just if there's anything on your heart, anything that you just feel you just want to just say in this space that you may not feel you can share anywhere else or just there's no specific topic. Um, yeah. Uh, Well, I'm curious to know why more people are not doing what we're doing. Mm. I'm not seeing these conversations happening anywhere. And I think they're vitally important because, I, I, and I saw it coming. I knew it was inevitable. It was kind of predictable. And, and, I, and I've, I'm following mainstream media. And... Uh, I was watching the perspective maybe eight months ago. Um, short of calling unvaccinated people mm. selfish mm. and irresponsible. Um, and then that conversation or that narrative shifted to, well, it's more complex than that. We've realized it's more complex than that, that the reasons are not just because they're procrastinating or they're lazy or they're just, you know, we've realized that it's this uh, minority, um, well, the demographic seems to be, you know, in their 40s, it's not actually the young uh, kids, it's actually this group of people and this seems to be, you know, and I, I feel a bit upset. I feel like, you know, well, I could have told you that or we could have told you that if you had asked us eight months ago, one year ago but no one had thought of, you know, how can you have a conversation when um, by the comments you make or by the narrative you hold, you're, ho you're closing all possibilities of a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, when I say you, obviously I'm talking about what, what I've been reading, 
what I've been reading. I mean, um, you, you, you know where, where we live in the Canary Islands. I was horrified. I think it was two months ago when the president or the mayor, I can't remember, but it, he was on the news. And um, he, kind of, he kind of labeled all people who were not being vaccinated as, um, I think the words he actually used were irresponsible and selfish. Mm-hmm. And that, that upsets me. That upsets me because, you know, we could just have an entire meeting about what responsibility is. Mm. Um, and depending on where you come from, what is responsibility for you or not? Mm. So, I mean, this, the, the, everything to be spoken about today, Brian, mm. is so huge. It's yeah. so, so huge that I, I, I think this is something that, should be done in in other communities and um it should be it should have uh it should be more evident more out there mm. yeah, i appreciate that and i can definitely share that sentiment so i would love to see this like on a, on a governmental scale to be honest with you like with all the issues the hot topic issues like especially in the united states when it's like guns and all the other hot topic buttons that we have i would love for them to have like a literal like town hall like this on a massive scale and get like the experts to share their best knowledge about something so we can make the best decision i would love to see that so i definitely resonate with that me too yeah Yeah. Um, i'd like to drop something in please um you know i i have not had a near-death experience um but i have probably had a few near-life experiences um by that i mean spiritual experiences and i had one at the end of october two years ago uh, 2019 before the pandemic hit and in trying to integrate it in the months following i was really starting to see more and more about how you know individual suffering problems it, there's a link there between that and global problems, global human suffering. And I thought that, okay, so I I need to look at how the way that my life relates to things like climate change and relates to things like racism and, and figure that out, you know, like I, and I thought, you know, I got a few years before the apocalypse and then right away, you know, like we're in lockdown, you know? And, and so I've been thinking a lot about this, about how this is all connected and I, 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 one of the things that I have been putting a lot of focus on lately, as Brian knows, is racism and, and white supremacy. And, and that's another hot button topic. That's another thing where when you talk about it, people tighten up and, and they get defensive and, and they're afraid to, to engage you in, in the way that we've been trying to engage on this call. And, and so um, I just want to say that as a, as a, as a warning that I'm going to, I'm going to say a few things right now about white supremacy. And, and it's not from a place of pointing a finger at people. It's from a, uh, a place of looking at our wider cultural lens. Uh, and, and so one of the things I've been looking at is what are the characteristics of white supremacy culture and how are they affecting this conversation about COVID, you know, and, and the ones that I've been looking at most closely are fear perfectionism, either or thinking, quantity over quality, uh, individualism, defensiveness and denial, fear of conflict or discomfort, and a sense of urgency. And if you put all of those, and again, none of them have anything to do with race. This is just like a a way of being. This is like a a fear-based, traumatized way of being that really is necessary to get a whole race of people to decide that another race of people is inferior. You can't do that without a lot of problems going on internally for people. And and now it's just become part of the culture. And so when I look at, yes, the media is is dividing us. That's either or thinking. The they're they're trying to get people, the 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 politicians are saying that you're either with us or against us, whether it's about terrorism or if it's about COVID. That, that's the way that we know how to talk about things. That's our traumatized, you know, white supremacy kind of mindset mm-hmm. that it, it, you're, you, there is no 
area for negotiation. There's no gray area. And, and so I, I, that's why I don't, I'm not waiting for this solution to come from the government or from the media, because they're just a reflection of us. They're just a ref, they're, they're, they would not be, yes, th- there's probably some person up there turning levers and controlling things, but they would not be able to do that if we weren't allowing it. There is something inside of us that is used to things happening in this way. And until we at this small level, uh, just groups of us learn to start looking at the, at those characteristics and, and questioning them, seeing how they're impacting the way we, we relate with ourselves and with each other. Uh, until that happens it, on a small scale, it's not going to happen on a bigger scale. And that's why for me, this conversation and conversations like it are so important. And I hope that we have more of them. Yeah. Thanks for that, man. You know, on that, on that note, you know, to kind of put a, a bow on this, um, you know, because so much, <laughs> there's so much scope and so broad to put it down to a thing. Um, but what I'm going to say as, 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 as concisely as possible is that, you know, is what can we continue to do to create what it is that we're looking for. Obviously being here is a huge step because a lot of us really didn't know or except, except, except for uh, no, Nostra and myself, where this conversation was going to go. You guys didn't really know who was going to be on the call. I had no idea if I was going to get like anyone who's going to be extreme on, well, let's not say extreme. Let's say maybe some very impassionate, passionate person who's going to dominate the conversation. I had no idea. I kind of like prepared for everything and prepared for nothing. So, but being able to be part of the conversation is to me a huge step in actually being part of the solution. This can be replicated, you know, on smaller scales, on bigger scales, you know, we can be brave enough and bold enough to invite people into a conversation. We've seen it's possible. We've seen, we felt our bodies get a bit tense and tight when other people are sharing their their views or perspectives. That's part of the package. It's part of the process. And so I think for me, when we're talking about going forward in conversations like this, this is like, I definitely agree. This has dominated everything. There's definitely going to be another part of this where there's other micro conversations that people are experiencing. And so for me, it's, you know, to, to, and I'm going to want to just pass this over to, to Nash if he has a bit more of a perspective on this is what can we do from an individual standpoint? Yes, there's a, a greater thing that's happening here, but me, I can only control me. I can't control if no one understands me. I can't control if people want to listen to me. I can't control any of that, but there's something happening in my body. We can all feel this together right now. So what does that look like going forward? And that's why I just kind of want to plant that seed with you guys right now. And then on that note, Nostra, if you have any, any other perspectives on any tips or advice or things that we can do to move forward a bit more lightly, with more courage, with more confidence and trust in ourselves as we, as we navigate this, it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere anytime soon, so... Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I, I I can get very in the weeds about this. I, I I'm very passionate about what about this connection between the individual and the collective. And so, you know, if you're if you're looking for something super entry level, it's just for one, just look at something that happened in this conversation today, some quality of listening, some question that somebody asked, some way that it felt for you to be listened to and see how you can bring that into more of your conversations with people going forward. Maybe maybe when you feel a conversation going in a way that, that doesn't feel so connecting, say something about that and, and, and suggest that it could feel different if, if you agreed to make it that way. That, that would be probably an entry to that. Um, on a larger scale, I, I believe what is necessary is for people to start becoming more conscious of, of what is happening inside of them and how that's affecting their relationship with themselves and with other people and with the world at large. And that means finding a system that works for you, because right now we're mostly on autopilot. We are, you know, we have very, we each have different influences 
um, different social circles, different media sources, different leaders that influence us in different ways, but we are largely operating based on conditioning. And so what is super important is to identify what your values are and figure out if the way that you are living your life is in alignment with those values. And if it isn't, know that that's okay. That's where you're starting. Don't, there, there doesn't need to be shame about it. Um, what, what you need is, is some way, some form of support, whether it's a person or a system that helps you look at your life a little bit more objectively from an outside lens, like we did at the beginning of this call, kind of stepping outside of ourselves and looking at all of our influences. And so that in community, I think, has a lot of powerful potential. And that's what I'm trying to work on. Um, and if it's okay, Brian, I could uh, let people know about an ongoing uh, communication class that I'm offering right now that is based on these ideas. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So it's called how to get along. You know, it's very simple. The, 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 the goal is, is pretty modest is just teaching people how to get along. And it's on Wednesdays at noon Pacific time from noon uh, to 1 PM Pacific time on zoom. And you can find that uh, information about that on my website. I can put that in the link uh, in the chat. Very cool. All right. So just the last little bit why I'm not, not just putting in the chat. Um, I'd like to just give everyone an opportunity just to take away, you know, just what was your takeaway from the call? You know, keep it concise, be honest. Um, and also just appreciate it. So I just actually, before I say that, um, this, you guys showing up has definitely offered, uh, um, not offered, but uh, definitely inspired me to want to create more of these conversations somewhere down these lines, because we've only scratched the surface. Let's just be honest. I mean, we've scratched the surface, but it's a start, right? It's a start. And so we can always go deeper. We can always kind of then segment this, segment this a bit more to truly get a better understanding about what's going on and how people are feeling, right? So just as the best you can, like, what would you say your biggest takeaway from this call is and just getting together? Like, what would you, what's that for you? I feel really grateful because of, uh, uh, I, I've been sharing my, my opinion without judgment and, and it's, it's really great. It, 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 it's, it feels great. <laughs> cool. You don't know this, but I've been judging you. Joking. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, I share Anna's feeling. I feel gratitude because I think this is the first time in two years, over two years, that someone has asked me for my opinion and, and, and we've just scratched the surface, obviously, but asked me if I would like to participate in a conversation where people can just share and listen. And it's it kind of, it's something that's, I feel like it's unheard of these days. We, I'm an educator and we've moved so far away from this and I, I see the world as a big classroom. Um, but we've moved so far away from this and so far away from being true to ourselves. I think the greatest betrayal is if you are not true to yourself. Um, and I think you, you have to respect where everybody's coming from because they're coming, hopefully. Uh, I think a vast majority of people don't reflect and don't contemplate, and that's fine. But those who do reflect and do contemplate and their decisions have been based on deep reflection and contemplation, um, the decisions have come from being true to themselves. Uh, I think I really respect that. No matter what your perspective is, I, mm. I respect that. Mm. Agreed. Thank you. You know, I'll share my takeaway from this is um, anything is possible. You know, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, I was definitely very nervous to kind of put this together, to put it out there. I didn't know what it was going to look like. 
I didn't know it was going to sound like. I didn't know who would be interested or not. I didn't know if it'd be worth the time, the effort. I didn't, I didn't know, you know, um, but I'm, I'm glad that I did push through that, those doubts and the insecurity and have faith in humanity <laughs> and create something that we're here, you yeah. know, like this is, to me, this is huge. Like I, I'm actually tingling right now, just like Patricia said, that I don't feel, at least I don't see it, things like this happening enough. And so I'm just really thankful for all of you guys making time to be on your Sunday, taking time away from your family, your obligations, wedding plans, everything, you know, to be here and just very grateful for you guys. And thank you. Anyone else don't want to take away? Sorry, just we we should continue the conversation. Just mm. that's my last. Yeah, your last um, I especially want to talk to Nasser. Yeah. I'd love to hear his opinions. Anybody else? Takeaways. Devin, Alexander, before we wrap up. Yeah, I'll share a little takeaway. The big thing is just conversation over conversion mm. and actually reestablishing like listening and trying to understand where people are coming from rather than just trying to make your point. And this was really cool. And I realized how rare it is to have a space like this where it's the, the point is actually to have healthy communication and seek understanding rather than just try to make our point and, and win a debate or something like that. Um, yeah, so that's it. Just like conversation for the sake of understanding, not trying to convert someone to our way of thinking. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. All right, cool. On that note, we're going to let respect uh, Nasser's time. So he has to jump off right now. So we can just like just sit back and reach your head like one more deep breath and I reach your arms up. Ah. Stretch your arms out. Uh, exhale, wrap around yourself. Just imagine giving someone a screen a hug. Uh, squeeze that person. Look someone in the eyes. Just give that person a hug. <laughs> Getting back to humanity. <sighs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Um, yes, definitely look out for the next one. Uh, I don't know when the time will be, but I'll start getting into the lab for that. But everyone have a beautiful night and a beautiful day on the East Coast and West Coast. Take care, guys. Thank, Thank you everybody. so much. Bye-bye. Hey, you're welcome. Cheers.